Welcome to the Power of Lifting podcast. I'm Eric Cafferty, owner of the Mecca Gym. I am a strength and conditioning coach and a contest prep specialist. The focus of this podcast is to dive into the mindset and the drive of people who have done incredible things with their lives. How are we doing, team? Hey. Good team. Go hey. team. <laughs> a news team. Assemble. Put it here, Chelsea. Yep, there yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah. There we go. <laughs> Oh, the man. power that just came into this room. Oh, it's just <laughs> stupendous. Just I'm so excited. Okay. Yeah, I'm over here just playing with my mic stand. But, uh, <laughs> the kid in the yeah. candy shop. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, this is my first time, guys. No, but <laughs> it is you. somebody else's <laughs> first time. <laughs> That's right. Uh, for those of you who are not watching and just listening, we have uh, potentially the specialist guest of all. Oh. Oh. oh, got her. Jeez. <laughs> Miss Chelsea Zemanski, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you. Some of you may know her as the Queen of Mecca, right? Yes. That uh, is the name I go by. It's preferred. Yes, that, is, that is preferred. Uh, although my wife may fight you for that time. <laughs> That's very true. But, uh, <laughs> maybe crossing a line. I don't yeah, know. Right? Right? Uh, well, yeah, welcome. So Thank it's you. so nice to have you on. It's so ha- I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I I'm mean, pumped. Good. Yeah, <laughs> although good. we get to talk pretty much daily, <laughs> it's not nothing a, new around here. It's not about the fun stuff, right. like lifting and goals and all that stuff, right? Personal achievements. Personal achievements. The good things. Yes. Yeah. Like the, the fun, fun stuff, stuff of life. The right? details. So. Uh, Chelsea, for those uh, people that don't know you, uh, what are you famous for? Famous for? Well, I'm the general manager of the Mecca Gym. Yes, very famous. Yeah. That's a very prestigious title. That is my current title. (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, Known, what am I known for? If, uh, yeah, famous for. uh, Famous for. Yeah, what are you famous for if people are hearing you for the first time? If they're hearing me for the first time, I guess I'm the little chick in the gym that lifts some heavy ass weights. That's there we for go. sure. There we, <laughs> go. we have video proof of these things. Yes, right. <laughs> Small but mighty. Small but mighty. <laughs> right. Yes. Love that. Uh, well, so tell us, uh, tell us, tell us what you like to do, do in your in your spare time. Tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the personal side of Miss Chelsea. Oh, the personal side of Chelsea. Well. Uh, lifting is a pretty big hobby in my life, but I'd say if I, you know, was taking a rest day or wanted a little break from the gym, um, I'm usually, shoot, I'm usually outdoors. Um, I enjoy, you know, snowboarding in the winter. Um, I play indoor soccer on Sundays. Um, that's something I grew up playing, and so I wanted Mm. to kind of keep that competitive streak alive in me. There you go. Um, I am recently... A, a huntress now. Ah, a I have huntress. gotten into I the like gotten into the hobby of hunting. Um, I like a lot. I'm a killer at this point. She's a killer. <laughs> She's done it. She is a killer. All right. Taking a life. She's a killer. An animal, all right. I have. I have. You were just eating an animal. You had. I was killed yesterday. I yes. was. Wonderful. Yes. It was great. That's how we all stay strong and it healthy at the Mecca. We go out in the wilderness. We get in the exercise. <laughs> right. Shoot said animal, carry the animal out on our backs, continue to get exercise, <laughs> process it for days, and then eat it. That's and then we hit PRs. And, and then, then we hit massive PRs. PRs. I, uh, I think we should do like a, a study at some point on like the like the performance benefits of like eating exclusively wild game. Mm, at agreed. some point, we right. all need to fill like six tags yes in a season yes because the yes. amount of meat required to feed one of us full time <laughs> right would be substantial yeah. right but then eat just wild game and see, see i don't how think there's does. anything that would bring the team closer together than something like that right Dude, i i would i'm not a superstitious man but i have a hunch yeah that performance would go way up i've heard things I have a hunch. Yeah, I've heard we gotta do it. I mean, let's, at some, let's, let's at some point, I'll volunteer as tribute. Yes, <laughs> it's tribute. I'll be the one to eat all the wild game. Thank you. Yes. Uh-huh. So, uh, have you d- elk hunting, deer hunting? What have you done so far? Uh, we've gone a couple things. Uh, we've been bear hunting. Ooh. Um, yeah. That was the first hunt I ever went on. Well, that's Ooh. quite a way to break in. Did you yep. find Winnie the Pooh? We saw. 
12 bears that wow. day. Oh we, God. um, Lions and tigers yes, and bears I didn't have my, <laughs> my passport or license yet. So I wasn't able to do anything, but you know, scope them out. Ah. Um, and we saw 12 bears. We saw two sows and their kids. And then, um, a couple just Look huge, at you technical terms. huge <laughs> bears on the opposite side of the mountain. Uh, We've been elk hunting, which is a whole different game. Elk hunting is like a vision quest. It is. Ah, it is cool. They cool are. Way to describe they it. are there, but not there at the same time. Ghosts. But they know where you are, and it just. Yeah, we so, were. So it's a mind game. It is. It is. We were sitting game. behind a tree, taking a nap, and um, all of a sudden I hear like thump, thump, and I'm like, oh my god, that's them. They're coming, <laughs> and then we don't even move, and they run away, and I'm like. Where would they go? Like what? They smell you. <laughs> um, deer mm-hmm. hunting. We've been. Yep. Yeah, I. Uh, I specifically. So I killed my first buck. Um, but we were originally bear hunting. Uh-huh. Could not find a single bear. And then we go over this ridge line, and all of a sudden there's three, um, three bucks just kind of chilling in this little crevice in the mountains, mm-hmm. and. Um, there was this one that kind of came out of nowhere, and it was a fork and horn, Ooh. and Ransom scoped in on it, and he's like, this thing's like 342 yards. You've got this. Like, yes. we've been working on it. Let me get you situated, and we're going to kill this get thing. Situated. <laughs> he's situated. And then, I mean, it was brought, you know, this will ruin the bear hunt, but, and I was like, I don't care. I want to kill something. Like, mm, let's right. get we're it. Not going home empty. Let's we're get it. And um, I had my first shot, and I hit it up underneath the armpit, Oh, yeah. And the bread it was the strangest thing because the three of them just sat there. Normally they would like scurry away or get scared or mm-hmm. I would feel they would, but they just sat there like nothing had happened. The one that was hit just stood there and I'm like, okay, something's going on. Like there is a higher power helping us right now. <laughs> and then Nothing he kind of moved a little bit closer and got him again in very similar spot and the blood was squirting and then he kind of went down into a tree line and so that's where we headed and i was like oh my gosh i got him like he's in the trees Mm -hmm. we got Mm -hmm. down there and there was nothing in the trees and i was like deflated instantly i was pissed (laughs) because i was like you've got to be kidding me like i got something and now it's gone i saw it's blood (laughs) and well that and then ransom was trying to find the um the blood trail for me Mm -hmm. to follow and we could not find it there was no blood and then all of a sudden I'm walking across the the mountain and there's like this big patch of gray rocks and I'm looking and I see this huge gray thing and I'm like okay I've been seeing I've been looking at rocks all day thinking they're Mm -hmm. bears this like this could just be a boulder for all I know and I'm just looking at it I pull out my binoculars I'm like there's fur and I look at Ransom and I was like is this it and he's like yep that's it I'm like just instant tears i'm like good god chels yeah and then we the got down there and the time it took just for me to grab the horns i was i was afraid it was going to jump out at me like i have a video and i'm just going back and forth like oh my god do i touch it do i not touch it and then once i finally touched it i was like okay i'll yeah. hug you like this will be it'll be normal now. ceremonial dance we're gonna <laughs> yes absolutely but man and, what a and then you cut it into pieces like a serial killer that we did and hike it out what That's a humbling cool. experience oh man yeah. <laughs> well just wait until you have to carry elk quarters out oh man which we did. We helped oh, a friend oh, that's right. hike yeah. out an elk. And so how I, was that after the deer doing the elk? It was, you know, it wasn't terrible. I didn't have a ton on me. They gave me, I want to say, a, a hind quarter and then oh. a smaller piece. So oh, it probably... Hind, hind quarter's a lot. So it probably weighed as much as what I was carrying originally uh. when I killed my buck. Um, but it wasn't terrible. And the terrain we were walking on was pretty flat. Oh, okay. So it, that, that helped. That where, Like where we killed sure. my buck, it was like downhill or scaling the side of the mountain. So yeah, that was, fun. I had my little walking sticks just. I always <laughs> think, oh, I really should take walking sticks. I, oh, I, was, going, I was about to ask. They're you. game we, changers. We haven't, we haven't talked about walking yeah, sticks. Yeah, they they help a lot. And they're I'm just game like, changers. Yeah, I'll just tough it out. Right. Then, <laughs> right. Soon enough, you have two sticks from the wilderness. So. Right. I mean, yeah, here's the deal. I mean, so you go out there and... Uh, you know, you you pack. Well, okay, I shouldn't say you. I because I, you know, 
built different. I, well, I <laughs> I like to you know have everything I possibly could ever sure. need. Right. Right. Yeah. Be prepared. Yeah. Preparedness is a thing, right? Uh, when mm-hmm. it comes to anything, so you know if you're doing a powerlifting meet, you got to make sure you have all your your sleeves and your belts and your singlet and your thing. It's like a checklist, right? Right. right. Bodybuilding show, same thing. You got to have you know your music. You got to have your suit. You got to have that. All everything's right. in a line, right? Success depends highly upon being prepared. Mm-hmm. So hunting, obviously, it's the same thing. You right. got mm-hmm. you know your pack, and then you've got you know equipment X Y Z. Correct. And socks then, are a big oh, deal. Dude, oh, extra socks. Got to double up on the socks. Oh yeah, but uh, it's yeah, it's extreme. It gets to be. Uh, it is the biggest ordeal in the world. Mm-hmm. And then you know you're like, well, you know, in this situation, I'm gonna want this backpack with this gear in it. Uh, in this situation, I want this backpack, backpack mm-hmm. with this gear in it. In this situation, I want this gun. In this situation, I want this gun. So you end up bringing what I would refer to as the kitchen sink right. of gear. <laughs> right. right. And for whatever reason, walking sticks are never a part of that for me. It's All just right. the way it goes. Or, you know, if you're bow hunting, that's a whole other setup. Oh, right. jeepers. A whole other setup. Right. It's a whole other set of packs. Anyway, so if you're on foot versus horseback versus, you know, it's like there's a million different scenarios. Mm-hmm. Where are you going? What's the temperature? What camo do you need to bring? What mm-hmm. color? Mm-hmm. What color of camo do you need to bring? Right. What? How many insulative layers do you need? Right. We did the cold weather podcast. We Talked did. about that a little bit. Yeah, so in depth. That, I don't uh, know what episode it is, folks, but, but check yeah. it out. Uh, I mean, it's just there's there's a lot that goes into it. There and is. then you have to plan on, you know, if I do kill something, what am I going to need? Right. right. So, That's the big part. You know, uh, there's certain I, – I go heavy on the survival equipment and light up on the convenience equipment Uh, Mm -hmm. and luckily the people that i go with are the opposite so it's a good compliment right i have everything that we would need in an emergency or if we got stuck out there for days or if something unexpected happens and they have the things that are like oh, I brought an entire saw to cut this animal into pieces. And I'm like, dude, I have I have two knives. That's it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I, I have two knives and a knife sharpener. You right. know what I mean? That's all. That's all I got to cut an, an enormous, you know, <laughs> so animal. <laughs> yeah, and they're like over there with the, you know, the saws all. I'm like, okay, guys. Um, anyway, those, those electric like fillet knives. Could, <laughs> yeah, we could yeah. we could go down. I mean, a lightsaber. Well, yeah. so you know they do have knives actually with re- interchangeable blades. That's cool. Which are cool. It's like replaceable razor blades. So, so you I, take one off, put one on, or exactly. They all work? Okay. Yep, and it's just these the blades. You just replace the blade at the push of a button, basically. Right. So I always carry one of those, and then I carry my normal, just fixed blade, kind of more beefy. Mm-hmm. The uh, the interchangeable razor blades are really good for like skinning and doing certain things, but there are certain cases where you need a, a bit of a stronger blade, mm-hmm. and so it's helpful to have a, a good a good big fixed. It's fixed pretty blade. cool. Actually, we're talking like you know we're talking like no more than like you know three inch right you know, fixed right. blade. Not like not like the blade itself isn't much bigger than like a pocket knife that you would carry, but it's fixed and it's really thick. Typically, mm-hmm. is what you should have anyway. I digress. <laughs> right. I love, Get I love, Derek talking on this. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> right. So, uh, Miss Chelsea, what is what is uh, <clears throat> your profession? We talked a little bit about you are the GM of the Mecca, but. What exactly does that in, entail? How do you how do you get to spend your time at this lovely place? Uh, you know, I could go by the nickname Jim Mom, maybe. Yeah, fair. <laughs> fair. Fair. Um, it definitely keeps me in line. <laughs> I uh, I do a little bit of everything. Um, I you know handle the the front desk and the uh, the childcare and the janitorial team. Um, do hiring for that uh, area of the house. Um, I am your personal scheduler. Yes. Um, <laughs> Which is a massive is, undertaking. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's Respect a thing. Respect <laughs> I, sure. yes, I had to apologize to her <laughs> prior to hiring her for that responsibility. We don't um, know each other very well, but I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry in advance. This is sorry ahead be... of time. Right. This is life. What, um, yeah, getting I usually do his schedule three months in advance. Uh, for his clients, just with how booked out he is. Right. Um, and for that, I am grateful, yes. by the way. Yes, keep it organized. Yes. Um, I pay all the bills. 
Yes. Um, take care of business there. Uh, handle, you know, member complaints, concerns, which being at the Mecca, we do not have that many, which is pretty incredible. Um, that is nice. You know, and if we do, it's little things here and there, nothing crazy. Um, I, uh, oh, one of my favorite parts of my job, I'd have to say, is the events that I put on. I love planning the powerlifting oh, yes. meets. Yep. I love pa- planning the uh, strongman competitions. Yes. I kind of thrive in those moments. Um, I'm so glad. Just, so grateful. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm organizational OCD, and so I start my spreadsheets Early months on. ahead of time. Early and on. Yes. Like our holiday hoist, I plan that thing for months yeah um what you needed to pack yes, house yes yeah. great event such a great turnout yeah, that, was, that awesome. was awesome that was awesome that was super cool and this, with the state and going right into the state meet in march i've already got you know 10 competitors and mm-hmm. we had five wow. in the first day we put out the registration so go. so yeah registration's open everybody at yep. mechagym.com and that is march 26 yep. march 26 march 26 state USA powerlifting state event and uh, yeah new weight classes which we discussed on a podcast with Marlon yes it was a few, few episodes back I believe but yeah so yeah. everyone so, just uh, take a chance rumor rumor on the street is Chelsea's gonna throw her hat into the ring for that one this is true ah, <laughs> this is good. true oh, it's out it's out <laughs> bikini competitor gone powerlifter <laughs> <laughs> Yes. How exciting. Yeah. So are you great. are you nervous about doing the planning and also competing? No. So Cuz I crush. <laughs> I'm good at it. No. Um so they so Marlon and Alex were trying to talk me into doing the holiday hoist for a while. Sure. And at first I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll do it. And then once I started to see the amount of competitors, I was like, okay, knowing me and how, you know, crazy I can get when things get, you know, down to the nitty gritty of handling 84 competitors but then on top of that focusing on my training i'm like you know i'm going to take a step back from this one and probably not do it but i will do march um and i just plus more time to train right and there's nothing wrong with that exactly because you had sorry we'll probably get into this but you were coming off of your bikini prep your your bikini season mm-hmm. august september and august september august, right yep. so that's very minimal time yes mm-hmm. yes and training. that's also what i had discussed with them i was like you know i'm still um i'm still not i'm still lightweight right now like i'm trying to gain weight back and mm-hmm. um even though like two months out of prep the the weights i was pulling and it was incredible to me like what my body could do in that just that two month span but i was like god if i give myself just a little bit more time yeah um because i'm not one to come in and just like half-ass it like i want to come in and crush people just so that's soul. so that's <laughs> take souls take that's what souls. i'm looking that's right. to do that's why, we, that's why we love her <laughs> you take souls. she takes souls uh yeah well i mean that's that is the thing though like you don't want to especially somebody who i shouldn't say that especially but for anyone, you should try and do your best for where you're at at that right. time. Mm-hmm. Right. So you don't want to rush it. You want to learn all the commands. You want to learn, you know, enough of the technical rules in order to do them correctly. Mm-hmm. The worst thing in the world is when you get somebody that's new to competing and they come into a meet and they're like learning, like, the basics at the meet and ah. meets are always learning experiences right. sure but when one of the referees is having to pull you aside after your first squat attempt and be like listen uh you have to lock your knees out before you squat like you should know that before you walk into a meet right so, but the great thing about being in this environment here is that everybody is going to heckle and or uh pressure you into doing things that you should be doing anyways Mm -hmm. right you know she's strong and and capable and yeah absolutely she should be pressured into competing in a meet for sure (laughs) right so good good on marlon great peer pressure great job at the same time you know we don't want to pressure somebody into doing it too soon when they're not prepared right you know right. pressuring somebody into doing something they don't necessarily want to do is okay <laughs> right. Right. that is perfectly fine well, yes. if you give they them enough time to be prepared for it right? <laughs> yes. that's the key um so yeah i'm pretty excited to to see that so what's your favorite lift oh. what's your favorite power lift gosh you know it was always squats 
because that was always what my most that was what I could lift the most weight. But Good lately, answer, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> lately, it's been deadlifts. Um, for whatever the reason, I'm just like I've hit some PRs that I've never in my life hit, and I'm like, wow, okay, like I, the fact that I can pull this weight and um, well, success makes things fun, right? It's That's pretty, very true. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty yeah. fun. Yes. Weird. You're really good at them. You like them. <laughs> right. Like, Checks out. <laughs> well, it's so cool because squat and like you put a bunch of weight on your back and you go down and you go back up. But then right. deadlift is you're just picking just something off the pulling ground. Pulling it up. Right. Yeah. So both are, uh, yeah, I flip flop between the two constantly. Right. Right. Bench is always third. It, always the last one. Listen, I'm just like, yeah, listen, you guys, come. you guys, you got it all wrong. You got it all wrong. <laughs> no, I can't have it all wrong. Squats and bench are the only ones that matter. Ah, ah, okay, <laughs> all right. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You know, um, that's interesting though, and to me, this is really going to help your, uh, you know, potential career as a bikini and or jumping jumping into wellness athlete which i gotta give a shout out to uh mr zach polkinen about uh we had a conversation about you oh man when was this it was pre it was Mm pre-show by a by a fair stretch probably like end of june early july ish um and we were having a conversation about divisions and things like that Mm -hmm. and i'm like I don't know. I mean, I think she'll be, you know, good to stay in bikini. But after watching what happened with your prep and on stage and stuff, like wellness is actually a real possibility. And he said that early on. And I'm like, dude, I think you're smoking crack. Right. I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't think so. But obviously I hadn't seen, like, he looks at your progress pictures every week. So good, good on him for picking that up, you know, early on. Right. And I was, I was not a believer, but now... Um, after seeing you more and watching competition and stuff, I'm like, oh, dude, wellness is a definite possibility. And not only that, competing in powerlifting and or just powerlifting in general, squats and deadlifts mm-hmm. and stuff is going to help that big time. Right, Bringing right. Bringing in the ghetto badonka dong and right. thick legs for right. wellness. There Thicker than a snicker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not going to lie. At first, I was not a fan of the introduction of wellness because I'm like, oh, man, that's so dumb. It's just like imbalanced bikini. But wow. mm-hmm. the more the more I see wellness kind of develop in advance, right. I'm like, dude, I'm a huge fan huge right. fan huge fan nice. of that right. division you yes. know what I mean it's, yes. it's uh, pretty badass that's for it's, sure. it is a cool division and I think that you'd fit into that category pretty well in the future I don't think like right now um, I think you're like still bordering right but more I think ha- if you were to prep anytime soon I think you'd probably be crossing over into what would be better in wellness probably right, and right. as you develop over the next year pff, yeah i think so right, big right. time doing the dids doing the squats all the dids and squats um so uh give us some of your crowning achievements oh crowning achievements um i mean let's see i guess i've been an athlete my whole life you know so where did that start i grew up oh gosh at a young age. At a young age. <laughs> I was um, in the hospital handling basketball. <laughs> I came out kicking. <laughs> um, I started, uh, so we're a big baseball family, um, huge Red Sox fans. Oh, and uh, so it was kind of at a young age, it was in, like I wanted to play baseball. Okay. Um, so I started in second grade playing pitching machine baseball. Oh, there you um, go. And I was shortstop for the team. I was one of the better players with all go. the boys. And it was it was always like from a young age I kind of had that that tenacity and that determination mm-hmm. to just crush people. Ah, the drive to that compete. was the yes. drive to compete. I love it. That was Huge my deal. thing. Like, you know, I'm nice, I'm sweet, I'm very sportsman like, but I will destroy you and win. It's kind of how I look at things. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a winner's mindset. So sure. You know, I did the pitching machine, and then it was like, okay, well, you should probably move to softball because you're a girl, and you need to see where that takes you. So I switched over to softball in third grade. Um, they start at 10U, I believe, or 8U or something. I can't even remember. Um, and I was on, uh, you know, year-round tournament teams. We were traveling all over. Um, 
And then I started playing soccer a little bit too, uh, basketball, volleyball. Like I just wanted to try it all. Mm -hmm. Um, And then once I got to – and kind of did that through middle school. And then once I got to high school, uh, my dad kind of sat me down. He was my – basically, he's the reason I I got to the point of an athlete status that I did. Um, And he kind of sat me down and he said, you know, there's – going into high school, there's – there's two types of people. You can, you know, go the social life route and enjoy high school and have fun, or you get a softball scholarship, you work your butt off, you focus on school, and you decide right now which route you want to go. And I chose, you know, the sports route. Um, and I don't regret it one bit. Um, I played uh, four years of varsity softball all through high school. Um, I got female athlete of the year my freshman year i was all state catcher three years in a row um i played soccer all four years as well on varsity um and then when it came time for college uh it kind of that's when i like started to hit like a little struggle so in third grade when they asked you they asked you what do you want to be when you grow up and it was always i want to be a usa olympic softball player that was was my dream in third grade third grade yeah right usa olympic (laughs) and then you know you get to it's time for college and you got to decide and i was like well shoot soccer is like i really like it it's Mm -hmm. it's fun it's like you're running i love running around the whole Throwing time bows. And, yeah. yes I mean, you know you can body check people <laughs> a little bit i did that a couple times it was great oh, um, right i know right I think um we all should have played hockey we all should have the problem was the unpopularity of the right? sport yeah but yeah. um i had to channel in my third grade chelsea and say you know what fault you wanted to be a softball player like see that through mm-hmm. um and so I applied to multiple schools. You know, my dream was always Arizona State because uh, my parents had gone there. It's warm. It's I play better school. in the warm. Mm-hmm. It's a party school. <laughs> um, it's the whole shebang. <laughs> it's everything. Right. Um, and I went to a, a camp there. I let the coach know I was coming. And basically, I was overlooked because of my size. And, oh, good Lord, I've... If you've ever seen, you've never seen me more pissed in my life. <laughs> um, I'm glad. I was not a happy camper. Um, and so then uh, I had been going to the College of Idaho softball camp since mm. middle school. And the first time I ran a home to home around the bases, the coach looked at me and basically said, You're playing for me one day. And I was like, Ah, oh, yeah, we'll see about that. Sorry, I'm like, going south. Yeah. Thank you. Like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, seventh grade came and he's like, Hey, welcome back. Like, excited to have you on the team in a couple of years. I'm like, Yeah. Years. I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. Right, so. <laughs> and then it came down to it and I was like, You know what? Like, Maybe I do go there. Like, it's it's local. I still wanted to be close to my family. Hmm. It's 30 minutes down the road, so I've got some distance, you yeah, know, if I need distance. it. Um, and, you know, I'll be playing, like, the game that I love. Um, and so I went to the College of Idaho for my first two years, um, played softball there. I actually got recruited. So I was a catcher all through high school and then got recruited as a center fielder. Um, played there for two years, and then – it kind of just hit me. I was I was burnt out, mm. and it was it was sad. I was like, "What the heck?" Like, mm-hmm. you know, I've been playing this my whole life, and I've been waiting for this moment, and now I'm burnt out. And it was super like I had to come to terms with, "Okay, do I continue and not enjoy it, or do I just move on?" And I decided to move on, and so I transferred to Boise State, um, finished my degree there, and then. I uh, started working at a gym my junior year of college and Mm. haven't looked back from there. Um, I started lifting weights. I learned how to lift weights in eighth grade. So I've been lifting since eighth grade. Um, I was a part of the varsity athletics classes all through high school and stuff. Um, So uh, then when it came down to wanting to still compete, um, I was like, okay, well, what can I do? I can't do sports anymore because I'm – there's old. old, you know, <laughs> like old. Old. I'm just old now. Um, so, up. you know, what can I do? And then these bodybuilding competitions kind of came up, and I was like, okay, like I could be good at that. Um, and so, a couple years ago, I started prepping for one, and it was terrible. It was like, I did you have a trainer or no? I had a coach, 
it, not the best coach. Um, We've and all been there, Chelsea. Yes. We've all been there. Okay. I, was, I was being underfed. Um, Yikes. I was, it was bad. That's the worst. It was bad. My, you know, compared to what, I compared a lot to what I was uh, going through this past year with prep, and it was, I mean, my bulk maybe got up to 1,200 calories. Jeepers. My cut got taken down to 700. Jeepers. I had, I was, I was basically like a walking spirit. It was just, it was terrible. <laughs> you just it was, floating. It was, it was terrible. Her spirit was gone. <laughs> it was so bad. She, and so she was blank behind the eyes. I right, got like yeah. halfway through. I was like, yeah, no, this is not, this is not it. Oh, and man. so like a year went by and I was like, okay, I need to now like prepare myself mentally, I think, before I go into this. Because um, I was dealing with, you know, typical female body image issues and I was like if I'm gonna go into a sport where I can get super skinny I need to know how to come out of that and be okay Mm. um so I spent so 2020 was a crappy year for a lot of people but 2020 was probably my best year because it was the first year in my life that I focused purely on myself um and it was probably the best thing I could have done for me um I did a lot of self-reflection I did a Big lot of self reflection here. Oh God, it was it was incredible. I you know yeah. I read the Bible. I started to get into the Bible more. Um, I I wanted to make sure that when I decided to do a competition, that I would be a hundred percent mentally okay through the whole thing but and you, then coming you, out of it. You knew the whole time that you still you wanted to do it again. Yes. You wanted to. You, okay. So that. Yes. So that's the thing. I think it goes back to the competitive yeah. nature of you. That yes. like you yeah. still. It's not like you wanted to quit because I had one bad experience with right. it. Like oh, that I was can determined. change. Yes. I'm still well, do it's it. like you see all these other people doing it, and you're like, oh man, that person can do it. It can't be that hard. Right. 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 right? You know like, I mean? come on, yeah. I could do this. Yeah. Um, come on, that guy, please. And I had met, I had met Zach and Laura through a friend, and then I knew they coached, and so that was at my first time actually stepping foot in the mecca was meeting right. with Zach right. and Laura because mm. I told them, okay, it's time. Like, I'm gonna go with you guys because I wanted. A female and a male coach um you know growing up like in softball i always preferred male coaches because i i like to get yelled at i like to that <laughs> like if it's oh, good to know good to <laughs> but, know <laughs> and like the females it was almost like they were like it was like they just didn't i don't know there wasn't that level of competitiveness within them that i needed my so wife was, was the same way so i was like you know so. if i could find a male and a female to kind of counterbalance like this might be perfect and mm-hmm. zach and laura were that mm-hmm. um and so no i decided november 2020 the idaho cup was going to be my first show mm-hmm. um we started training for that um it was incredible to see what my body was capable of doing i mean and then my bulk I was getting up to 2,000 plus calories. Mm-hmm. My cut, I was only getting down to like 13, 1,200. Like, mm-hmm. so it's like, okay, this is what it's supposed to feel like. Yeah, um, way more ideal. Right? right? You know, I did my first show and it was it was awesome. I got, you know, I did all the categories that I could um, for as much, you know, stage time. They always say you want as much stage, t- stage time as Absolutely. possible. Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, it's my first show. I might as well do it all. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got, you know, first in true novice. I got first in novice. And then I want to, s- I got like third in open, I believe, second or third in open, um, which I just wanted to place. Going into my first show, I was Listen, like, sure. if you're not first, you're last. I just want to no, play. <laughs> right? No, that's so true, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> Chelsea gets that. <laughs> um, I just wanted to place at that point. And then, yeah. um, like, after the show, Zach and Laura were like, okay, like, we can take this further. Like, oh, you're, yeah. you're mm-hmm. capable. Like, your physique can do whatever we want it to do. Like, like how serious are you about this? And at that point, I was like, all right, let's freaking do this. Like, I'm yeah. ready. Cool. Um, and so we picked two more shows to do in 2021. Um, we picked the Salt Lake show and then the mm-hmm. Vegas show. And it was cool because Zach picked the same ones and he hadn't competed in years. And so it was cool to be able to prep with him and go to the same shows as him mm-hmm. and it, like just experience that. Um, and so this prep, it was, man, like my bulk, it was great. I got to the strongest I'd ever been. Um, through prep it was good it was tough it was mentally challenging but that's that's the type of thing i crave is something that just challenges me mm-hmm. like that it's not um, worth doing unless it's got some degree right? of difficulty mm-hmm. right? right absolutely um 
I came on stage a little bit heavier than I was my first show, but way more muscular, way leaner, um, way more vascular and tight. And, uh, you know, I went into Salt Lake. I won my open class. Um, got slightly disappointed in the overall, but that's okay. I'm not mm-hmm. salty about it at all. <laughs> you are a little. That's okay. <laughs> um, and You're then, a but that kind of then, uh, that's what then triggered me. Okay, two weeks, you've got Vegas. You're going to destroy Vegas. Mm. Um, so then, I, you know, I busted my butt for that next two weeks, went into Vegas, and I knew it was a bigger show. So I wasn't expecting to win overall. I was expecting, I was like, okay, I'm going to win my class. That's for sure. Um, but what Vegas brought was, oh my, a whole different ball game. It was, um, it was incredible. I got, uh, probably the best part of that show was uh, getting taken out in a one-on-one comparison with a lady in her mid-40s who has probably been competing for years. Mm -hmm. Um, Her physique was incredible. She was in so many different categories between bikini and wellness. Mm -hmm. Um, And so being taken in a one-on-one comparison with her and then beating her in my class, I was like, okay, that's all I need. Like, right. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, Were you at that show, correct? Yeah. 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 No, that was an interesting, um, an interesting thing. And I think that's kind of the point where, um, you know, I started seeing the, you know, the potential for you to uh, go to the wellness category mm-hmm. because um, just for, for what they wanted judging criteria wise at that show um they were going for a little bit of a more slender less muscular softer look than Mm -hmm. what you brought yes which you know kind of comes down to some of the inconsistencies that you may see with judging especially between local level shows even though that vegas show was a local level show it did since there weren't quite as many shows Mm-hmm. this past year it did bring kind of a different level of competition right. i would say right um and being in vegas um you know it, it just brings uh, different types of competitors you know right so going from you know where you were at um, the salt lake show and then tightening up for that show in las vegas i think your look you know was by far better at this show and had they not introduced the wellness category this year, I think you probably would have won the overall at that mm-hmm. Vegas show. But, um, yeah, the gal Carrie that you ended up, um, that was in your category, it was, I had never seen them do that in an NPC show before because they literally um, pulled you two out of the lineup, sent you to the back, judged everybody else mm-hmm. and then brought the two of you up and we're like okay see you later right to yeah. everyone else it yeah. was yeah yeah and so it they was... basically picked their top two because you know the thing is you look both of you just looked so much different so much better than everybody else mm-hmm. in the category that right the two of you would have just taken all the attention and because they would have been trying to decide between the two of you the whole time right because it was oh, that sure. type and then um, everyone else just would have been And distracted. everybody else. Right. They wouldn't have judged the rest of the class. <laughs> right. So that's kind of why they did that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was interesting. So the cool part and or interesting part about that is that gal won the wellness overall at that show. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. She then went on a, a couple weeks later to win her IFBB Pro card in wellness. Wow. And okay. Chelsea you know beat her albeit in bikini a couple weeks prior so Mm -hmm. that kind of tells me that you know you beat her in bikini because you had more of a bikini physique than that but Mm -hmm. at the same time you were fuller you were tighter you were a little bit leaner Mm -hmm. you just need a little bit more development in your lower half and then that's like you know right there that's like a wellness pro card waiting to happen right? right So it's kind of a cool thing, you know. It's a learning experience, um, always. Well, being what your third—that was your third show yeah. I've ever, ever done, yeah. yeah. Third show. So yeah, I mean the potential is certainly there, right. right? I mean it's kind of cool, especially seeing, you know, how far you've come. It's like totally newbie gains from mm. last year right. to this year. I'm like, oh man, I wish I could progress that fast. <laughs> right. That's amazing. Right. Like, my, truthfully amazing. Alone in my so. shoulders 
de- the development in my shoulders blew my mind. You no, know, it was I, all over, man. It's all over. It's like completely different body. Right. You know, you can see on the pictures in the wall, but it's like, yeah, totally like the delineation and your glute ham, even the you know your midsection, your shoulders, mm-hmm. like the the whole thing, even your legs. You know, it's just totally different. Right. Totally different look, um, which is you know really cool that's the whole idea right being right. able to see progression right mm-hmm. um what would you say was the biggest um adjustment in your headspace that you had to make going from like normal sports mm-hmm. to competing like in bo- the physique sport world the bodybuilding mm-hmm. world um i'd probably have to say like so with normal sports You either win or you lose, and it's based off of how good you are. Mm. Um, With the, you know, the bodybuilding sports, it's very subjective. subjective. Mm. And that kind of messed with my mind a little bit this year, because I was like, I mean, you know, being told after the show that I'm too vascular, you can see my hamstring separation, I'm like, God forbid, like... (sighs) I'm I'm sorry. Sorry, Chelsea, <laughs> you're too good. <laughs> right, I'm like I apologize. Um, that's kind of one thing that's then sparked this whole powerlifting thing was it's like okay, you can either lift the weight or you can't. It's as simple as that, and it I is very straightforward. And I like <laughs> that. I like that straightforwardness because um, the the subjectivity it, it can mess with you. It is and, tough. Mm-hmm. And then because we already we're already our biggest critics, and so then we've got a judge telling us hey, you just worked your butt off for, you know, eight months and potentially starved yourself a little here and there and maybe cried a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> but but you need to look better. And and so that's that kind well, of was it's like... it's not even better. It's you need to look different. Right, uh, or you need to be softer. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but I don't want to be soft. I don't want to look like I just did cardio for 12 years yeah, like and ate yeah. a couple grapes. Like, yeah. I, I, I would rather come on stage looking shredded and muscular right. and not win than look skinny. That just... Yeah, that's kind yeah. of the mindset I took into it this this season. Yeah, was... and it, it is going to be different with with every you know judging panel. And at the mm-hmm. national level, they tend to get it right more mm-hmm. often than not too. But you know, it's like getting as close as you can to what defines the category. You know right. what I mean? Right. And it's so hard because you can you know look better or have a better physique Mm -hmm. you know than somebody else and they may beat you because they fit the criteria that that particular panel is leaning towards right and sometimes they have a criteria you know and they're trying to they're trying to make a statement Mm -hmm. you know what i mean right Mm -hmm. it's like every every time they select a, a high profile you know winner like the national stage Um, or at the Olympia or the Arnold, they're defining the category with that person's build. Mm -hmm. So if Mm -hmm. they're comparing two different people, and that's the thing about bikini is it is so subjective. Mm -hmm. They're comparing two different athletes, and you have one of them that's a little more slender, a little bit smaller in the waist, not quite as muscular, not quite as hard, Mm -hmm. versus somebody who is more muscular and a little bit leaner um, and a little bit more of the action figure type look right then you know depending on which way they lean that can really set the tone for you know other judging panels in the future so you look at the olympia this past year it's a great example of that you know the two gals who were top two uh one of them um, was exactly that the more muscular a bit more of the you know the the action figure mm-hmm. so to speak mm-hmm. uh, and then the gal who ended up winning was you know a little bit softer mm-hmm. not quite as lean not quite as muscular mm-hmm. uh, wasn't quite as extreme looking right you know and they end up um, you know picking her because that's the look they want for the category moving Mm -hmm. on right um and so that's that's kind of the same thing that like you'll run into you ran into the same thing Mm -hmm. um at at that show they just had you know a group of gals that were 
not quite as lean, not quite as muscular. And that kind of sucks. Like when you're competing, that's why bodybuilding can be a little bit, uh, or where bodybuilding is a little bit different because, right. you know, typically if you're bigger and leaner, then you're typically speaking going to place in front of somebody. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they're not just going to have better shape and beat you based off that. I mean, look at who Mr. Olympia is right now. Right. Just right. huge. Big, big right. and hard and right. crazy looking, right? Right. So, yeah, it is pretty interesting in that regard. But something that especially, f like, newer competitors need to really get a grip on and understand like you know a lot of people say like you know focus on yourself you versus you bring your best look like that is totally the case especially when you're like starting off and like mm -hmm. where where you are coming from like that's exactly how you want to be but after you get to the point to where you've had some success and some acknowledgement and like hey this is you know you're good at this mm -hmm. now it's like okay well now we need to start splitting hairs and getting really really particular about you know everything right muscularity how we bring you in how you train in the off season right. what you need to you know yes what what you need to focus on because where do you really want to go where do you want to take your physique like do you want to be an ifbb pro mm -hmm. or do you just want to you know have a freakishly awesome physique right? right like what do you really want to do right with some people it's like well i'm already so close i just have to manipulate a few variables and i can mm -hmm. get there right. Right? Sure, sure. right and others are like man i could take it or leave it i just want to be a boss you know what i mean right <laughs> right, just, right. Like, screw it. <laughs> but i think powerlifting is a really good outlet for competitors especially just to stay consistent in the off season mm -hmm. Although it doesn't complement everybody's physique the way that um, you would necessarily want. You know right. what I mean? Whereas in your case, it actually works out. Right. Because the squatting and the deadlifting uh, is exactly what are going to take your physique to the next level. Yes. For competing in like a wellness, for example. Right. Right. So you're Good kind for of you, Chels. Huh. Right, in, right in the right spot. Right in the right spot. Right. I planned this. Just so lucky. So <laughs> Since lucky. I was in the third grade. <laughs> I've been ready. So what do, uh, what do Zach and Laura think about this whole powerlifting situation? Do they know yet? They do. Okay. Yes. Um, you know, we had a meeting. Um, we've met a couple times po since post-show and the first time it was kind of just going into like a rebuilding phase mm -hmm. um adding stuff back in building muscle that type of thing and then they met we want they wanted to meet again and i was like okay i need to tell them that i want to compete in powerlifting because i had always thrown it out there like oh yeah powerlifting would be fun yeah, yeah this might be fun and laura was very at first um she was like i don't know and i think it was out of uh being a big sister and not want, wanting me to hurt myself or oh, sure. you know Get chance of it. injury or stuff like that um she's very mothering she is yes, absolutely. she is and i thank her for that yes. <laughs> um and then so we're sitting in the office and i'm and they're like so what are you feeling about this power lifting thing because she saw me hit my uh one deadlift pr and she she's like shoot okay she's she's getting strong so then i think it kind of clicked like man she might be capable of this like and because then we started talking about, okay, well, what, you know, bikini show, do we want to maybe not, you know, set a show date yet? Do we want to wait? And I was like, I would like to wait to just see, you know, how I'm feeling. Um, but I would like to maybe try powerlifting first. And they're like, okay, let's do it. And they were super supportive and on board. And um, they gave me a program to start working on. And it's kind of cool because everyone's kind of, I've got multiple coaches pitching in on my program for this that oh, many a cook the mecca way super, yeah, many a cook in the super thankful for you know i've got zach and laura who i mean they specialize in their certain things and then i've got marlon throwing in some ideas i've got alex throwing in some ideas so uh, i've got chris now throwing in some ideas oh, yeah. um and so it's it's exciting and for me now to when i do train i'm like okay like you know, I'm gonna do be doing uh, this rep range today versus what I would normally do here because the training for it is so different so between different. bodybuilding and powerlifting. It's nuts. I mean, it <laughs> is quite a bit different. Yeah, right. You're lifting weights, but everything else is pretty different. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. It's it's an adjustment, especially you know, for me when I kind of transitioned because I had always trained hypertrophy, hypertrophy, hypertrophy. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and then 
you know, going into like, oh, I need to just be as strong as possible at these three movements. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're used to like doing a ton of volume and you're used to doing, you know, quite a few different exercises right. and all that stuff. And you're like, well, man, I really need to, you know, re retune my programming. And then you're like, okay, well today we're just going to bench press for two hours. Okay. Awesome. Right. Right. Yeah. right. And you're like, that's it. Right. <laughs> you know, it's right. such a weird adjustment. And you like, you're like exhausted. Yes. But you're like, why am I so tired? Right. I right. hardly one did. I'm not did sweating. Anything. I'm not. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. not sweating. And then that you do that for a while, and you then you talk a bunch of shit to powerlifters, and you're like, oh yeah, you guys don't really actually train. It's <laughs> great. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. You stand around a lot. Do like one or two reps. Take and a nap. Take another nap. Take like a ten minute break. Yes. Yeah, so walk uh, around no. a little. What an interesting deal. <laughs> I'm being facetious, but, um, <laughs> yeah, it is, it's so, it is so different. You it know, is. And the focus of training. So do you like it so far? I do. I do. It's fun. Um, not many, like where bodybuilding, you do more accessory lifts as well. Yes. And you focus on a lot of those things. There hasn't been many accessory lifts, which at first it was hard. Cause I was like, Hmm, I like to work my shoulders. Like I like to do stuff like that, which I can still yeah. do. Um, but it, it's fun, you know, learning the proper form, learning how to brace properly for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, Alex was teaching me, you know, bench today, mm -hmm. making sure, you know, is my grip right? How's my arch? All that type of stuff. A lot um, of technicalities. There right. is. But, you know, especially with things like, you know, really having to nail down your brace and your hinge and things like that with powerlifting. I mean, that's something that's just going to go so far right when it comes to um you know just developing you as a lifter so even after you leave powerlifting mm -hmm. that's a skill set that everybody should have that lifts powerlifters are typically pretty good at it because they have to be or mm -hmm. else they'll you yep. know injure themselves you're, yeah right. you're donezo right. yeah you're, you're donezo if you're not good at bracing or hinging right. and, or at least you're you're going to injure yourself or you're just not going to be as strong as you can right. be. And, prob and that's probably not that strong if you can't hold a good brace or hinge properly. Right, right. right. But, you know, you learn those things as a physique competitor. And then, man, I mean, what a favor you're doing for your glutes and right. your legs. Right. You know, learning yes. how to really put all that you can into those compound movements. So then you back off. And, you know, the, so the thing I always tell people is they're like, you know, I get, like, physique athletes that are, like, complaining, like, um, you know, oh, I don't want to do this strength cycle because I'll make them lift heavy. Right. Yeah. Right. You know? right. And I'm like, no, you need to do this. Right. And they're like, I just want to look pretty and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, okay. And they'll say, I don't need to be that strong. And right. I said, okay, that's fair enough. I agree. You don't need to be that strong on one rep, right? You mm -hmm. don't. Mm -hmm. But... If you're getting a stronger one rep max and you're training for actual strength, that means that your three rep max is going up. Uh -huh. That means that your five rep max is going up. That means that your 10 rep max is going up. So, and you know, just doing 10 reps or mm -hmm. hypertrophy style training, your 10 rep max is not gonna be going up, say that much like it would if you were to get, you know, focus on your one rep max strength right. per se, right? Mm -hmm. At times, right. right? It's a lot of shades of gray here. But um, <laughs> so if I were to ask you, you know, do you think you're gonna get better development by being able to do sets of 10 at 200 pounds or being able to do sets of 10 at 250 pounds? You versus you, what do you think's gonna cause, you know, more, more muscle gain if you're doing it the same on each rep, mm -hmm. right? You're mm -hmm. just doing 50 extra pounds for a set of 10, which is going to be 500 pounds more volume times however right. many sets. Right. If you're doing three sets, that's 15 extra, 1,500 extra pounds of volume. Mm -hmm. What do you think you're going to grow better from? And they're like, oh. Right. Got right. it. And break yes. it down. Break it down. So, right. you know, if you're working on your one rep max and you get up to the point where you can deadlift 350 pounds, mm -hmm. 400 pounds as a little mighty mouse. Right. You know? Right. And then you back it off and you're like, all right, time to go into 
high gear to build this muscle volume up, right. and you drop it back down, well, now you're able to do sets of 10 with way more weight than you could before. Mm -hmm. What do you think that's going to do for your physique development? Right. right. Like, sky's the limit. Right. right? That's so, so cool. It's cool. That was awesome. Anyway, that's kind of uh, kind of my thought process with the, with the whole strength development thing. Um, anyway, I digress. <laughs> no, that was good info. There's no digression there. Um, <clears throat> so, Chelsea, uh, what are the top three things that you're most passionate about and obsessed with today? And how does that compare to the past? Whew. That's a loaded question. That, that is, is a loaded, a loaded question. question. Um, okay. Some things I'm passionate about that are different. Um, probably, let's see. I would say passionate about, um, I've always been passionate about a healthy lifestyle. However, the definition in my mind of a healthy lifestyle has also changed over the years um you know growing up and going through high school and college you as a female sometimes males too uh, you go through the weird issues of looking at your body and you want to look a certain way and stuff like that um and so for a while it was always okay i want to i want to look a certain way um and that's really not me in the grand scheme of things um and it's kind of the the more mature i've gotten in that sense it's turned into a healthy lifestyle of okay how much weight can i lift how much how does my body feel not so much as how do i look it's how do i feel um i like the fact that i can lift heavy weights it's exciting for me most girls you know think i mean growing up i remember in uh like lifting classes all, no girls wanted to lift heavy weights because they thought they were going to get big and bulky. And I'm oh, like, wow. and I'm like, well, you're not. Like, you, you just won't. And let, I mean, now if you eat to get big and bulky, then yes, you'll get big There's and bulky. There's a difference between bulky, <laughs> like fat bulky, and right. bulky, like muscle bulky. Right. right. You can get fat bulky pretty easy, but that ain't right. from the lifting. Right. <laughs> right. Right. That's from all the Christmas cookies I ate. <laughs> exactly. It's bulking season. It's bulking season. <laughs> Tis the season. <laughs> but that is funny. So to not to totally interrupt you, but you bring up a really good point and it's worth it's worth asking uh, straight to the source from a female. Like what I I just want to get into like the head of some of these people, mainly women, I will say, um, that, you know, they're like, oh, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to lift because I don't want to get too bulky. Like, what is, what is that all about? Like, so Jazz, you're answering, I mean, like, asking this like, question. Do I they, need an answer to I, I literally have a hard time. Now, granted, I understand the physiology behind muscle growth and like what is normal and what is possible. Right. 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 So they might not realize that, you know, try as they may, even if they did everything like 100% perfect, they could lift hard for 10 years and they probably wouldn't gain that much muscle, right? Right. 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 So like I know, so it's, but is it just because they don't know that and they like, I just don't understand how they possibly could think like they're going to touch one weight and get huge. And get huge. So, it, okay. The... The real issue I have is why do they think muscle is ugly? Right. That's that's one thing I've like, never understood how, myself. I've always what? appreciated the oh definition. My God, yes. If I don't have definition, then I'm like, oh no, like something needs to change. I don't like the the flat skinny look yeah. um, I mean I mean there's nothing wrong with nothing wrong that, with it at all like, but I prefer definition I, like, I feel more why do they just not like the like the like having muscle I mean I'm not saying you need to look like a bodybuilder woman right. but most women won't look like a bodybuilder woman without performance enhancement right like right. I just don't understand like why they don't like the idea of muscle and they think that like they lift two weights and that's what they're gonna look like right and it's like dude if you can look like that after lifting for like two months bro you need to be on the miss olympia stage take advantage of right. those genetics right right, for right. Sure. right yes like if you can like absolutely do it and then the even more confusing thing to me which i actually do kind of have a 
an explanation for this, but still really grinds my gears is <laughs> yeah is these dudes and it's like all over social media Don't. i'm sure i know you where you're going take, yeah you're <laughs> about to walk out yeah, I, know, I, know, I know we have conversations about this but, all the time. I, but i have to say it these dudes that are like ew she's too muscular right or mm -hmm. i'm like listen you don't say ew she's too fat mm -hmm. to right. like a woman that's you know, a little bit too heavy in mm -hmm. an unhealthy way. Right. Mm -hmm. I would never say that to anybody, mm -hmm. even though she she may be, uh, you know, needing to have somebody to talk to about that. Right. right. Like, right. like you don't right. like, oh, you're too muscular. Right. Like, ew, that's gross. I'm not attracted to that. It's like, bro, nobody asked you. Right. Okay. Like, well, and it's a kind of reverse. Guys don't like to be called skinny. So it's like. If a girl I mean, looked at you, I think the same guys who were saying that are about muscle, muscly right? girls mm -hmm. are probably like they wouldn't be care like they wouldn't care about being called skinny, right? Which it's right. such a different culture than what we all live in, mm -hmm. all right? The time. Mm -hmm. Like right. our culture is so much different. Yes, and yeah, I don't understand the women that are like, oh, I don't, I don't want muscles, right? Mm -hmm. Like I don't want muscles. I think it comes right. down to like a social stereotypical. This is what We're the perfect female physique yes. looks like, and you see that at the the Victoria's Secret and all that kind of stuff. Oh, and it boy. is the flat, yes. skinny. Yes, Ew. and that right. was that was me. <laughs> right. That was me through you know high school and yeah, yeah, yeah. early college. Was it was I saw that and I was like, okay, that's what people want. Like. I can try to get to that, but that also will mean that I'm going to starve myself a little yeah. bit. And right, I, well, I, I just wonder if that's like that's a two part answer. Like mm -hmm. the girls come from seeing that. She's like, obviously, if I lift weights, I'm not going to look like that. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, they have zero education in the aspect of that's lifting weights thing. and what that really means. Zero education, yes. Yeah. And then they, the insecure men that are like, yeah, that's that's too right, much muscle make because them feel bad about it. make them feel bad about it mm -hmm. because they lift more than it. Yeah, yeah. Right. it is kind of funny. Like there's, you know. Uh, an issue yeah with right. dudes that like they yeah they probably don't like a, a strong you know a tr like attractively muscular woman because right. it makes them feel super insecure that's right. that is definitely my suspicion for why they don't like that. Right. Like, right oh like i've never said a woman is too muscular mm -hmm. like i mean and it's just like how i've you know i'm not going to call anybody fat or you know i shouldn't say you when you say victoria's secret model and too skinny like that's not that's not right either like however they mm -hmm. want to live their life but the problem is that i have with that is i know what it takes for women to get there it's the unhealthy and that's aspect. not healthy right and so that's why i say ew because all i can see is these women having an unhealthy relationship with food right and eating disorders right and all that goes along with that so but I really, I just can't for the life of me understand why people cannot stay out of other individuals' business, especially from True. healthy things. Mm -hmm. even, That's where it comes down to. Yeah, like even along the lines of, uh, like recently there was a gal on uh, that I follow on social media that just got a boob job. She looks great. She looked great before. She looks great after. Mm -hmm. But, man, she competes, and it really balances out her physique. Like, from a competition standpoint, mm -hmm. like, sure. it helps. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Like, it makes you look more feminine, mm -hmm. for sure. And it brings you a different depth and dimension to your upper half mm -hmm. to give you that shape. That right. you, the shape, right? Yeah, the shape to the upper body. Now... You know, a lot of people get into the conversation like, do you need that in order to compete at a high level? No. Right. Chelsea doesn't. She does great. She right. looks great. And she doesn't need, you know, fake boobs in order to do that. Right. But, you know, would it help? Probably would help her overall, like, appearance and look and her shape just because that's just what fits the criteria better. Right. But you can do that other ways. You can, like, you, you can do that other ways. It's not necessary, mm -hmm. right? But the problem that I have is when other people hop online and they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you got a boob job. And it's like, dude, nobody asked you. Right. Bro. It's like, like, my nobody personal asked decision. You. Yeah. Nobody asked like, Nobody, yes. like, 
why right. do you care right. that that like somebody wanted to do that? Like That's it's it's like I, it blows my mind. One of the biggest right. downfalls of social media is the aspect of people ha- feel the need to have to comment because they have, have the opinion. opportunity to yeah. do so. Right. It's like why do you have to have an opinion? Like right. why right. why do you have to give your nobody, unsolicited nobody opinion? Asked Take for your it. time and your right. finger movements right. to think of something, write it out, click send Mm -hmm. and then and then but then those people i know this because i've seen it is there then they're constantly like checking for notifications checking for responses checking for likes attention grabs Mm. like they want the likes so they want somebody to come after them again so they could have that yes it's just it's sad it's a fascinating human psyche deal it is and it's yeah social media is Mm. a feeling of power over somebody else Mm -hmm. it's so weird how the natural man like in us sometimes is like mm-hmm. craves that right i'm just confused by, by so it, to be honest like it's seriously a bunch of insecure people like we yep. need to get get rid of that like stop, confidence stop campaign against, that's right <laughs> confidence campaign this is the reason for the movement this is the reason <laughs> Yeah, you need to get. You, we need to be happy for other people and their success. And if mm-hmm. they are proud of the body that they built and the muscle that they built, like you're back to why we started on to this tangent. <laughs> it, you know, being happy and healthy and mm-hmm. and doing these things because you're passionate about them and health is something you're passionate about. Like mm-hmm. that's friggin' awesome. Right. Like, one hundred percent awesome. Yeah. Right. You know, and I love that we get to share a community with a bunch of people who feel the same way. Right. Right. That is helpful. And are supportive, and you know, and we can say, "Ah, damn! Look at that! Look at those muscles!" Right. Or, you yes. Know, whatever. You look great, and we don't have to be like, you know, it's it's, it's not a thing where we like put each other down and be like, "Wow." Well, that Chelsea, I mean, she's just way too muscular. Right. I mean, <laughs> right. Not at, the first time. At, 100 and, at 115 pounds, dripping wet, she's way too muscular. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, excuse oh, man. me? <laughs> oh, man. 115 pounds, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> what right. did you end up coming in at contest weight? Uh, like 113, 113? So, my first show, 113. Okay. Um, second and third, 115. Okay. But okay. my body fat was lower. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Man, I was this year tighter. Was yeah. yeah, this year, yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I thought I had that right. That's there you go. A weird thing about me and people's body weights. I don't know why. Right. <laughs> it's probably because it's your why. profession. I'm just gonna know. say that it's really weird. But, uh, yeah, for whatever <laughs> people reason. and people's body weights. It seriously, they it just sticks. I don't know. It's like glue. Just some numbers are weird. Like this is. I think some some numbers for some people click. Mm-hmm. Like I had this girl at senior year of high school. For some reason, she knew all my basketball stats all of them Hunter? and would tell me the average she was a stalker she, she was she was a little bit i understand <laughs> that. but what was impressive to me is she remembered all of that stuff and then could put it together and send it like right. some people with, with numbers whatever number it is you remember it right some people are like birthdays some people are people's ages right and it's just like i just remember you're you're like 32 and it's like how in the world we met once in middle school right stuff like right that. I don't know. but yeah or your birthday yeah, i get crazy. that yeah anyway. So aside that. from the health and fitness, what else are you passionate about in this in this day these days? Um, I'd have to say uh, family. That's always been a passion of mine. Um, uh, my family, you know, my mom, dad, and brother, and then um, kind of the family I've uh, been so graciously invited into, <laughs> <laughs> you could say. Um, but yeah. Uh, they're they're what keeps me going um they're my support system um both sides um my number one fans my greatest supporters uh people that i you know strive to be like um but also want to you know with the new fam instill some of me within them um and it's just above all things family is just the greatest blessing um so that's for sure yeah it's a you know I had a great childhood growing up. I had a great life. Um, You know, I've got a great relationship um, with my mom. She's my best friend. Uh, My dad, you know, was my coach growing up. My brother is my brother. (laughs) Um, Beat him up still. He's a good egg. (laughs) He's a good egg that I throw around. (laughs) You know, and then, um, you know, on my other side now, I've got Ransom and his two kids that have kind of changed my world uh, for the better, something that, I literally I thank God for every day um 
something that I knew I you just you kind of find where you're supposed to be and like it's it's weird and it all kind of falls into place how it should and that's kind of how it did and so it just it's it's been incredible to grow with them and know them on every little aspect and um like I mean kids are a whole different ball game but it's oh dear god oh man it's oh dear god the can of worms you just opened it's such it's such an incredible thing though they are incredible little humans um the the things that go through their brains the things they say the things they say that i'm just like (laughs) that you could record you wish you just had it on record what and why would you say that but also but then the things they do i'm just like what the challenge the challenge that they present you know Ah, that's a good way to say that is just such a a unique you know opportunity i think it's truthfully the like the the last piece that you really need in order to be like who you are meant to be mm-hmm. right to be able to have that level of patience because if you're not a parent um you know whether it be you know from like a you know a- adopted kids or whatever mm-hmm. um even even if they're not your own necessarily but i mean having your own that's a whole nother can of worms as well but just mm-hmm being present with children that you're responsible for like Mm -hmm. you don't know patience until right you know you experience that right like it's just a whole different yeah it just teaches you i think so so much about yourself you know being a parent right forces you you know i guess you could use the the term to grow up right i guess but yeah it's like you completely um you know you're you're not a kid anymore mm-hmm. when you have kids because when you're responsible for other humans it's like okay now mm-hmm. now i am the mm-hmm. you know because before like you know when you show up to like family gatherings and stuff like mm-hmm. that if you don't have kids you still are the kid right <laughs> you know what i mean right because you're not you know you, you're not responsible for right. anybody but yourself right. right right um but then when you have kids it's like it's a total like shift of a family dynamic Mm -hmm. like when you have kids and you're raising kids it's like you you become the responsible one Mm -hmm. and then you realize that your parents are definitely okay with relinquishing that Mm -hmm. responsibility and now you're responsible for your parents too how's that (laughs) yeah right Right. Right. that's like, like oh man now you know oh god i gotta really watch you guys when you watch my children oh i don't trust you one bit. right like right. how did i not die right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how man. did you take care right. of right how did i survive all wait hold on years? hold on but it's such... hold on <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's such a change right it's like i mean you know you go drop your kids off with with grandparents mm-hmm. and you're like i mean you trust them but oh it's for like, sure it's a di- it's a different moment. but it's like you're watching over your parents who are watching over your kids because you're like i still have to be aware right well you, it's weird because i feel like you you enter a different state of being a different state of oh, purpose sure. and mm-hmm. like you just don't know it until you do it you mm-hmm. do, because there's no way of knowing it so it's like you fully trust whoever is taking care of your kids like for example but at the same time it's like i'm still they're still my thing to protect right my my so or, or like or take care of so it definitely is a totally different it deal. is it is you know it's awesome it, it's super cool well you and i were talking and you're just like i don't understand how like they could get on my nerves so much and all this and all this and then i'm gone for three hours and i miss them already right like <laughs> literally like, i leave and i'm just like ah like, where and then you I see him again and you're like you grew up five years how did you do I that i know you only slept one night or yeah. they come you know they come <laughs> home from the neighbor's house crying and you're like oh, well, what happened over there because i'm about to go over there yeah. like house like yeah. it just, it's like you're triggered <laughs> and, yeah, right. um and then and then gosh just the like the gradual like comfortability they get with you i mean like in my situation um sure. you know coming into a a family um and just the the comfortability they get with you and it's god it fills your heart with so much like happiness and joy and love and they you know they you're walking on the sidewalk and they hold your hand and you're like oh 
my god, they're holding my hand. Like, sure, that's we're making cool. strides. And, right. yeah. Or they cuddle you watching a movie or they fall asleep on you. And it's just like, oh my god, like this is. To be relied upon by right. these right. humans. Yes, yes they, they look up to you and they. It, it's it's an incredible feeling. So, yeah, something that I'm, I'm blessed with for yeah, sure. Absolutely. That's for cool. sure. Yeah. So. <clears throat> If somebody is struggling or stuck, what words of wisdom would you give them? <laughs> um, I've got two different sides here. I've got like my little hard ass side. This, she just <laughs> totally reminded me of David Goggins there. Oh yeah, I've got two different paths <laughs> to go on here, people. Right. I have a feeling I know where this is going. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I've got my side where it's you know you, you suck it up, Buttercup. Like I. I've been through stuff where it's like you, you just deal with it and stop whining and stop being a baby. Mm -hmm. um, you get through it, uh, rub some dirt on it, all that type of stuff. Um, but then there's, you know, my side of caring <laughs> and kindness. Oh, <laughs> and, um, I try not to show that. Side, <laughs> Very particular instances and, where this is needed. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and I basically, you know, I, I look at it from – I've kind of started to look at it more from a, uh, a you know, religious godly side um, and kind of, you know, whatever you're, you're feeling, whatever you're going through, like God has a plan for your outcome of that. He daily is, you know, throwing emotional struggles at us, mental struggles, physical struggles, but it's all how we come out of it. That, that's what matters. We we're, we come out of it stronger than what we were once at, whatever the situation may be. Um, there there was a reason for it, and then there's going to be an outcome of it. And how you handle it is going to be whether this outcome is positive or negative. Um, and if you just you know grab the bull by the horns and go with it, it's gonna it's gonna be a positive outcome. If you you know you think you think about it. Uh, you get through it, um, you push yourself, but, you know, if, you, if you're if you a, you know, woe is me and this is the end of the world and this is the end of my life, then it's going to be a negative outcome. But mm, that um, is for certain. it's definitely, I try and, like, throw, you know, that at them, um, the, the whole mindset thing. It's all about mindset and how you look at the situation, you know. Why is this happening to me? Well, let's see. There, there could be multiple reasons why this is happening to me, but how am I going to get through this and how am I going to come out better than I was the, you know, the day before? What are you going to learn from it? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I think uh, looking for the opportunity in each situation, whether it be you know, inherently threatening or negative mm -hmm. and or you know, very positive is really, really important. You know? mm -hmm. And having that conversation with yourself early on you know mm -hmm. i think there's rarely a situation that comes up that takes us by surprise there are there are surprising situations sure. there are but you know a lot of time a lot of times the writing is on the wall right you know mm -hmm. and it's like you know sometimes it's like oh why didn't i see that and then other times it's like well that didn't go as i planned right, right. but if it didn't go as you planned like what uh you know why why didn't it go as planned you know what what paths could you have taken as alternatives mm -hmm. like you know you, really i think the big thing for me in this situation and as i hear more and more people answer this question which you have a great answer by the way i i totally agree um but the more people i hear um you know just talking about this the the struggles you know it's like um you know, I think about how they should have been like people that run into struggles. Those struggles should have been foreseen prior to having those struggles. Wow. So you should already be working in your mind with how to deal with that as a contingency, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Not that you want it to happen, but how would I deal with that if it did happen right. so mm -hmm. that you don't get blindsided and that you have a plan, mm -hmm. you know, for, you know, I could think of a million different examples, but, right. you know, that comes down to like struggles in show prep, struggles, say financially, struggles, right. mm -hmm. you know, with kids, how would I handle certain situations with kids? You know, mm -hmm. that certain things have got to cross your mind, like, you know what how how would i treat certain situations like mm -hmm. how would i 
you know, treat a situation with my kid getting bullied or how would I right. treat a situation with, you know, my kid getting into drugs? Like, God forbid, I'm certainly going to do do my part in preventing that. Right. right. Um, and God forbid that happens. But if I ran into an issue, how would I, how would I manage it? How would I talk to my kid about it? Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And that's just, that's just one example. You could think about a struggle in a million different ways in life, but, right. um, you know, based off certain things that you're doing, like you've got to have plans, you know, mm -hmm. that's it's, so cool. it's, it's snowed outside, right? You right. got to have contingencies to, to deal with with right. those those sorts of struggles like right. leave your house a little bit earlier to mm -hmm. get places on time like mm -hmm. you know it's just a, a fascinating thing like when people just like are having these struggles and it's like you like you you didn't see this coming right. <laughs> you know right. what i mean right like yeah there's you know there's times when like you said you need to just put your big big boy or girl pants on and and get through it and there's certainly times where you know, I think it's super important to have people to lean on mm -hmm. in certain situations because mm -hmm. that's human nature. Right. That's you know, you're you're not expected to be able to handle the stress of the world all mm -hmm. on your own, you know. And when people realize that, I think it helps disperse some of the stress and anxiety mm -hmm. and, you know, that's one of the things with like anything with business. I know that I have a team of people that I trust hmm. and you know, I've picked those people and those people are all in a particular place for a reason. And I have to trust that I can rely on those people. Right. right. And that's, you know, how we can get through hard things as a company, you know, right. um, there's like I said, a million different examples that right. we could use, but right. yeah, like it's that. totally. I like your answer. Great answer. Yeah, well, like uh, you, you, uh, everyone knows my slight obsession with the Walt Disney Company, and their former CEO. His name's Bob Iger. Anyway, he wrote a book. He said the most underrated um, aspect of leadership or principle of leadership is thoughtfulness. Mm. That's like, I think that's what you're explaining. Mm -hmm. It's taking the time to think a little mm -hmm. bit ahead. And that's what mm -hmm. people don't do anymore is take time to just think. Right. Like yeah. it's going outside, okay, what, are, what do I need to do? A little right. bit continuously. Right. Like the thoughtfulness. And so he gets asked, how did you run this massive company and grow it into the way that it is? How, how was that not so difficult? He said, well, it wasn't difficult because of these principles. Right. And he doesn't necessarily come out, but that's how I take it. It's just like, well, if you think about stuff. Right. Right. Then, and you put people in place in your life that you can trust mm -hmm. and counsel with, mm -hmm. then there is no reason to worry or feel like that because right. whatever aspect comes will come and then you can deal with it if it's surprising. If not, then you you already right. have your thought, right. your plan. Yeah. Right. Pretty, pretty freaking sweet. Plan pretty awesome. action. Pretty awesome. Well, guys, I think we've hit our time limit for today. We have. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to get Chelsea back on. No, of course, been, I mean she'll be around. It's been so thrilling. I mean, we'll keep her around. <laughs> we'll keep her around. I only live here. <laughs> yes. It's the second home. Um, well, thanks for being on. Thanks for having this me. Has been such a pleasure. I'm so such excited. A great, <laughs> yeah, excited a was an understatement. Yes. <laughs> the text we received after oh, we told yes. you that. I, I love it. I love it. That's I pretty love good. It. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed getting to know our wonderful Chelsea a little bit better. And we will have her back on soon to finish answering uh, a barrage of questions and having more fun. True. I'll be oh, and maybe talking about what it's going to be like managing the new place. Ooh. Yes. Yes. The stakes grow. Yes. The, the next chapter grow. is coming. <laughs> right. Challenge accepted. Yeah. Ah, level up. <laughs> All right. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you for joining us on the Power of Lifting podcast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. For more content like this, follow Eric Cafferty and The Mecca Gym on all social media platforms.